In the build-up to the governorship election coming up this Saturday in Kogi State and to others, the Independent National Electoral Commission at the state headquarters in Kogi says they are 90% ready for Saturday's governorship election. The head Department of Voter Education and Publicity at the INEC state headquarters in the state, Mr. Hali Usuli, disclosed this in Lukoja where he said that non-sensitive materials have been distributed to local governments and polling units across the state, while sensitive materials are being awaited. Well, joining us from Kogi State, first of all, is uh, our correspondent, uh, TVC News correspondent, Habida Lawal, to bring us up to speed with uh, details out of Kogi. Habida, it's good to see you this morning. Talk to us what the mood is like in Kogi State, where you are. Good morning, Veronica. It's a bright morning in Kogi State today, and um, the mood of the people as bright as the weather itself. Um, today we are expected to experience um, the Independent National Electoral Commission in Kogi State um, distributing sensitive materials to areas where voting will be taking place and also from um, observers group and data that we've um, gotten so far over um, uh, the PVC collection experience the 94.6 uh, percent although there's a dip from uh, the number of registered voters uh, and the PVC that have been collected from the four, from four years ago where the state um, experienced the governorship election out of 1.9 million, uh, over 1.9 million um, PVCs um, that uh, were with um, INEC, over 1.8 million eventually collected. You also have um, Kogi East um, Senatorial District being the highest number, being the highest uh, number with um, PVCs that have been collected, and uh, followed by um, Kogi West and of course um, and of course um, Kogi Central. Uh, we race is um, going to be a three-man horse race um, you have the, and of course the SDP there have also been um, uh, a, a pent up um, grievances and um, they have been uh, we've also experienced um, political parties um, accusing one another of um, fomenting trouble and violence we've also seen um, a big presence of um, security agencies since we got here yesterday Veronica from the uh, political parties who are accusing themselves, you know, of you know trying to foment violence and all of that, but they all signed peace pacts yesterday. What was the mood like yesterday when they were signing a peace pact? And do you feel that would be enough to you know carry on with the elections without any furore? Well, the mood suggests that um, a lot of people are eager to vote on um, Saturday and uh, will also. Um, experience Kogi State election and of course the ruling party um, pre, um, governorship can, candidate is um, also one of the major contender in this um, race. Mm. Okay, Habida, we'll definitely get back to you for more updates out of uh, Kogi State but this time around we need to move to our studio in uh, Abuja where we have uh, our guests uh, who will be joining us uh, talking about a uh, member of the House of Representatives representing Ibejuleki Federal Constituency, Honorable Bayo Balogun. Honorable ba Balogun, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. I'm certain you were listening to our correspondent there where she was telling us or bringing us up to speed with regards to details out of Kogi State leading up to the elections. She mentioned that uh, there's been a huge number of uh, collection of PVCs, even though as against in comparison to 2019, there is a dip. But then there's the aspect of uh, the gladiators, uh, the three major contenders, uh, accusing one another leading up to this, this uh, election. Uh, there's been pent up uh, anger and tension and all of this. How is this, how do you see all of the dynamics that we have witnessed uh, in the coming days leading up to the uh, uh, election, perhaps impacting this election on Saturday? Well, thank you once again. Good morning, viewers. Well, uh, as a monitoring committee of HINEC 
But our role is to see that, to ensure that INEC is working in tandem with the laws and uh, are actually guided by some, by the guidelines stated by the organization. And having gone through their process, I was also in the, our committee was in uh, Bayasa. Uh, some of us also went to Kogi and uh, Imo to observe the preparedness of uh, INEC for this uh, election, knowing that this is going to be a major decider on the image of INEC after the probably, um, well, I won't say right or wrong, but the assumption of the public is that INEC had actually not performed credibly well in the last uh, February election, February and March election. Uh, Looking at what they've done so far, well, I can say they've actually uh, done well, meeting up with all expectations. All materials have been delivered, both sensitive and non-sensitive materials have been delivered. Oh, over 44,000 4, staff deployed to all the units, both uh, permanent and ad hoc staff. Beavers will be deployed. Uh, for the election. The IRF2 has been confirmed to be working and uh, they, we hope to see it working effectively. Uh, peace accord has been signed. That's why some uh, few inches uh, they have during the process. And uh, polls will be starting by 8.30 as said by INEC and uh, 30 Eight polling units, uh, about 40 polling units in all, will not be having any form of voting due to the fact that there were no voters' uh, registration in those uh, uh, units. So, and uh, over 40,000 policemen actually been deployed to, to all the various uh, centers. So it's, it's a... It's a, an election that is going to take place in about 649 wards and uh, 56 uh, local governments in the three uh, states. So we can see, yes, INEC is actually prepared for this uh, election, but all the other aspects well, might not be that of INEC when it comes to the issue of major security. The, the police and other security agencies are also to play, uh, play their part, and uh, we believe that everybody will play his own part. Well, um, Einek had said that um, he insisted that the beavers cannot be faked because it's normal for political parties to express their apprehension as regards whether the beavers can be faked. But then the chairman insisted that it can be faked. Uh, I would like to ask you, do you think that Nigeria or INEC has attained that level of sophistication where its beavers cannot be, uh, you know, be, be altered or faked? No, well, that is not about INEC. Technology, INEC is not a technology-based uh, organization. It's, it's just using the technology. And uh, whatever happens in the area of technology is, should be a general um, situation within the country. But I believe INEC, I mean, uh, Beavers is not such a sophisticated uh, equipment. As long as the, the, the line, the, you have data and the machines are okay. And uh, they've also said that if they have problem with any of the Beavers, there's always a backup somewhere, probably by the wreck, to bring up and uh, to replace if there's any problem. And if the problem persists throughout the period of the election, then they will have to redo the election in such a, a center. So they made it very flexible already. And uh, during the last election too, we didn't really see much of uh, Beaver's failure. So where we had the issue was actually the RF, the loading of uh, all these uh, uh, resorts at the polling units. And you know the size of the election, it was election at all the various states is different from off-season election like this where you just have three states so and uh, if you look at all the the size of the population of all the 
three elections put together is even not up to that of Lagos State. So we, we, don't, we shouldn't have any problem with, these, uh, with the beavers or any equipment. All right. INEC, in the course of the week, um, you know, called on its uh, electoral staffers uh, that uh, they must ensure that they carry out their duty diligently. And uh, the question is, how expedient is it for INEC, you know, to make this kind of statement? Recall that you mentioned earlier that uh, the image and confidence reposed on INEC is at stake as it is. Well, you see, we, we have to, first of all, ensure that we separate these issues. What are the functions of INEC and what are the functions of other agencies? Security is not the function of INEC. They have the security agencies to ensure that there's, there's peace and there's security. everybody is secured within the area and before, during, and after the election. So every other agency too must be prepared to play their own parts. So, and I think most of the problems they have in most of these states now are issue of security problems, which INEC on its own cannot handle. So we appeal to all the security agencies. And uh, for, the, for this election, three DIGs actually been deployed. So for, for an off-season election, having three DIGs, these are the next command to the IG itself. So I think we, we, have, we are taking this election seriously for government to ensure that if you have the DIGs, at least you have one in, all, in the three states to oversee the election. And whenever you have a DIG on ground, there will be so many IG and there will be so many CPs that will be supporting the, the DIGs. So these are the, the security issues are the major problem now. INEC is prepared. INEC should not have any issue. In fact, the, the issue of security also affects the staff of INEC. How secured are they going to be? So these are the f issues that we have on ground now. And uh, I think with the uh, plans in place, security plans in place, uh, we shouldn't have any, we should have any anxiety. So things will be all right. We are just want to appeal to everybody. Go out right. and vote for the any party of your choice. You know, don't get intimidated. Don't bother yourself about what anybody says. Your focus should be going out to vote. And when you get there, behave yourself, be orderly, and don't also cause any trouble. We should not say anything that will instigate the public. We should not say anything that will create crisis. So it's it should be every one of us coming together to ensure that we have a peaceful election. And we should all know that the, the, the victory of any party or any candidate is not worth anybody's life or anybody's blood. So these are the things we should have at the back of our mind. Election will come and will go. So we should prepare ourselves to have a peaceful election and congratulate anybody that wins at the end of the day so that we can move on with the work of business, the business of the government immediately after the election. So that's my appeal to every one of us. Well, even though you said that uh, anyone who emerges winner should be congratulated, you are a member of the ruling party, and then definitely you would also wish your party well. And that's where I'm going. Would you say that um, your party had done enough, you know, in Kogi State over the years during the reign of um, um, Governor Yaya Bilo? To, for your party to be re-elected uh, as governor this Saturday? You see, I'm sitting here today as the chairman of House Committee on Electoral Matters. I'm not from Kogi. People in Kogi will take decision. They know what he has done. They know what APC has done. They know the uh, antecedents of the party of the party, of the go uh, governor, and they, that's going to also speak on the way they actually vote. So uh, in, in, the, in, the, in any election, elections are local. People will take their decision based on what they see. And uh, we, we know who has been performing. 
people in the in their locality knows the kind of project that has been going on within their area, how well the governor has been taking care of security, how secure the, the state has been, despite being, a, they call it a, a conference state. That means a state that has boundaries with many other states. And this is a, should be a very serious challenge, security challenge to any state. And if the state, as of today, is still better off in than many of the states, even in the North Central, probably that the governor has been able to do something uh, special to ensure security of that area. So it's going to be left to the people to see how well he has done and uh, how well the party has performed to be able to say, okay, let's continue to give our support uh, to the party. So like I said, I'm not from Kogi. So it is their responsibility in Kogi to take the decision and uh, vote for the right person. Indeed, although there have been allegations and counter-allegations with regards to matters of uh, security or uh, insecurity in the state leading up to the election. But my question is going to the matter of the signing of uh, the peace uh, accord and uh, the committee uh, that is in charge of the signing of this peace accord is concerned that uh, perhaps candidates and their parties may not be committed to this accord at the end of the day. Uh, we saw yesterday what happened in Bielsa. Immediately after the accord was signed, we saw two major candidates, you know, uh, just uh, accusing themselves. There was uh, some heated arguments uh, between both of them. How concerned or how confident are you that uh, this matter of peace accord will hold water on a day like uh, Saturday? You see, when you sign this peace accord, it's signed by the party and the candidates or their representatives. They are not the ones that will be at the different booths, uh, polling units. People that will cause crisis are the polling units. Polling units are where the crisis starts. We are, that's where the elections happen. So that's why I said our appeal should be to everybody. Those are just matter of intentions to, uh, to say that, yes, we are ready. But there are many other factors. Even when you hear some noise, even when you talk about domestic uh, violence, it might be the person that is actually causing the violence that is shouting the more. So most, some, some of the times we, we don't just look at the noise. That's why the police have to do their job in, to investigate what and what is actually happening. Those are not the functions of INEC. When it comes to security matter, that's why I said, let's situate these issues at the right places. INEC cannot handle security. INEC is not the one in charge of the peace accord. This is what we all have to do. If, if there's going to be peace, it's going to be something coming from every one of us. And that's why we have to appeal to people that election will come and will go. You, the, you, uh, the various units, because this issue happens at the units. If you are standing at your unit and you cause crisis at your unit, anything happens to you, then you are going to be on your own after the election. So many people are still in detention and in police station after the 20, I mean the February election, February, March election. Some people have been incarcerated because of what they just said, not even what they did, what they just said. So you have to watch whatever you say. Whatever you see can be of security implication. So everybody must be prepared. So let's look beyond the signing of peace accord. Let's ensure that we talk to our people. Those are the people that usually cause the problem. The, the governorship candidate will not go, up, go out and shout and say anything anyhow or fight. The party chairman in the state will not just go out and say anything anyhow and fight. These are not the people that will be causing the crisis. It's, these are these the followers. Some people who felt ah, their, their candidate must win at all costs. No candidate must win at all costs. Let the work of the candidate decide. Let the uh, performance of the candidate decide. So, and I'm sure by now anybody, everybody already knows who they want to vote for. So we should appeal to the people at the units. 
these are the people causing the crisis. And the police must be ready to do their job. And that's why the number of uh, police officers deployed should be a signal to all troublemakers that government will not tolerate any form of violence or problems at the units. So these are the areas we should also we should be very concerned about. I want to also appeal to the traditional rulers, youth organizations. These, these are the people that have control of their areas and they can talk to their people. This everybody ensure that we talk to people within the areas to ensure crisis, to ensure any problem that could lead to uh, heighten the state of insecurity in the, yeah. in, the, in the country. You know, we are still going through serious economic uh, issues, and uh, we right. should not worsen it. Okay, very quickly, um, we'd like to ask your reaction as regards the, you know, the latest ruling of the appeal court, you know, sitting in Lagos, that upheld the judgments of the election tribunal that, you know, also declared you the winner of the Bejuleki federal constituency election. Uh, talk to us about how this came to you. Were you really expecting it, or were you expecting something different? Well, uh, these are part of the issues we are having generally as far as the judicial uh, process, in the, the um, tribunal process during this selection. We, we, I think the, the judiciary has actually been overwhelmed by the jobs we are actually giving them. Many cases are not supposed to be in court. The one in my federal constituency is a situation that was not actually warranted. The, the Labour Party that went to, to court was not even on the ballot. And because the I next said they never did any primaries and they, they never submitted any need to INEC, and they, they were not on the ballot because I think they have crisis within their party. So they never did primaries, which meant that no name was actually submitted. So if you now go to court over, so, over such a situation, and the Electoral Act 2022 has amended, has, has, amended, has actually removed omission on the ballot paper as a basis for petition. And the people must know that you don't go to court based on sentiment. You go to court based on facts. And uh, yes, some of them said they went to court, their party went to court, and uh, they've been, they found out that it was INEC that was at fault, that when they were trying to post their, the list of their candidates uh, on the uh, INEC portal, that INEC portal was actually faulty at that period. Yes, and there was a judgment that said that INEX should actually receive manually all the um, list of candidates they actually sent to INEC. But in court, in, in, in when it comes to court issues, you don't benefit from what you are not part of. The candidate for my, local, for my federal constituency, Labour Party for my local uh, federal constituency, was not actually part of the people that even went to court. So you cannot even benefit from that. Even but what I think is even saying in my own federal constituency that there was no primaries at all in my own federal constituency. Even if they had sent any name for my federal constituency, that would have been a name not recognized by INEC because they never witnessed any primaries. But if people still go to court with such uh, cases, and after even winning at the tribunal, they even went further to the appeal, wasting the time of the court. And I think serious... Um, cost must be attached to the to anybody who actually wastes the time of the court moving forward. I think these are the areas we are going to look at in the electoral heart to ensure that people don't just waste the time of court. Because the the whole of the cases within the southern area was actually brought to Lagos, held in Lagos. They were always working till night every day, even in the weekend. So we must do something about this. And we are even still thinking about how all our cases could be concluded before swearing in. And this is how many months after the election? About six months after the election, and we are still in court. I'm, I'm sorry, six months, after the, six months after swearing in. That means we have February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. And we are going to about 10 months now after the election. And see people are still in, in the appeal. 
So we must do something about this. We cannot continue to do, to do things the wrong way and expect good results. So it's, it's, it's for all of us to search our conscience. The lawyers are crashing out on this situation. They are making a lot of money. And uh, I don't think they are, they are not being fair to their clients. Even when you see a very bad case, you encourage your client to go ahead. And even when they lose, you still tell them, yes, you still have a chance at the appeal. Yes, it's your constitutional right. But these are not rights that you, are, you should be abusing. We are stressing out the old judiciary. They have stopped all other cases because of uh, the tribunal. Many other cases have actually been stopped. So this is not good for our, old, or for our judicial system and the electoral process in general. So I just hope we'll do something about it very soon. Right, because uh, this is also a matter of concern for some electorates who say, what is the essence of going out to vote when at the end of the day it's the courts that will decide? No, the courts are not deciding. You see, when it comes to election, there are processes. Yes, even if you have the crowd, if you have people behind you, you must follow the, the right procedure. It's just about saying, I want, I'm a very brilliant student. Yes, I'm sure if I do jam, I will score 100%. And when they now say, take your form, fill your form, so, so, so way, and submit at so, so time, you, you forget to submit or you decide not to submit on time, and you are not claiming that you should go and see your, your school results. You are a very brilliant student. Did you actually submit your form when you are supposed to submit it? Did you actually go to the normal process of ensuring that you are a good candidate of jump at that period or YEC, whatever election, I mean, examination you are preparing for. So it's not just for you to say that I'm brilliant. It is for you to have done the right thing so that your results will be able to come out and then the, uh, the, your efforts will then be rewarded. So it is for every one of us, even our parties now, we should ensure that when they say you should have uh, legal officers as part of your escorts, Please get a lawyer to be your legal officer. Don't just get anybody to be the legal officer of the party. Because nowadays, the, the electoral heart is no longer what you can joke with. You have the electoral heart to guide you. and also have your party constitution to guide you during your primaries. It is in the law that you must decide, you must have your primaries at a designated place, which should be known to INEC. Your party register must be submitted to INEC 30 days before the primaries. If you flout these laws, you are bound to lose. Even if you have the crowd, it doesn't matter. You must go by the rules. So people must learn that these, there are rules that we must abide by so that uh, we will no longer be going to court. If I have a candidate, I'm an opponent that has not flouted one, of, flouted one of these rules, I don't even have to do, more, do much of campaign. I'll just wait for him after the election. I'll go to court and I'll get the mandate, even if you have the crowd behind him. It's not just about having the crowd. So let the public also know. Advise whoever you are following, which party you are following, or whichever candidate you are following, to ensure that they do the right thing so that they will not waste your votes. And I'm sure that uh, in all the judgments, you could see that most of them are actually, I think, less than 10% were actually uh, overturned at the Court of Appeal. That shows that the, the judgments at the, the judiciary level to are actually near perfect. So we just have to move on and ensure that we do the right thing.